Okay, today is August 10th, 2013. I've been uh, thinking a lot lately about somehow getting down some thoughts about my life. I had my 78th birthday in April and uh, I've had a lot of reminders somehow uh, that, that at this age you never know how much longer you got. I've had a number of friends die in the past year and in fact in the, the past month I was asked to sing solos at two uh, funerals of friends of mine that died. Uh, this makes you start really thinking about what your life has been and uh, and I really, I'd like to make, have some record kept that would uh, be interesting to my, to the people who follow him after me. And uh, so I appreciate Ren, my son, uh, giving me this chance to record some stuff. It'll be pretty informal, uh, but uh, I do have some themes in, in my mind that I want to focus on during the course of this uh, this work that we're doing together. <clears throat> I guess um, one of the things that has been really significant in, in my life is literature. <clears throat> Recently I went to uh, to a uh, to Medicine Hat to the celebration, the 30th celebration, 30th anniversary celebration of of the establishment of the library down there and it uh, got me thinking about how important books have been in my life. I've always felt like libraries were sort of sacred repositories of the best things that have been thought and said by by mankind and <clears throat> libraries have had a terrific influence on my life. I mentioned this uh, in the course of the meeting and somebody suggested that maybe I was being a bit um, sacrilegious almost, you know, to, to use the word sacred for libraries. But it got me thinking about some of the uh, differences between what I was taught by the religion that I grew up in. I don't need to mention even the name of it because a lot of the uh, teachings are very similar to many uh, Christian churches and, uh, and and I started in my mind comparing some of the things that I learned in religion uh, as opposed to things I learned by reading literature. <clears throat> when I say literature I'm talking about books that are that have a, a serious purpose, written by people who have something to say about the human condition and uh, to help us understand what we're made of and what we're motivated by and uh, and what we, we can hope to get out of life. And I've learned so much more from literature, reading literature, than I learned from my religious instruction and I spent an awful lot of time in my early years being instructed and I have to say that a lot of the stuff I heard and learned to live by was uh, was not helpful. And in fact, uh, it was stuff that I, I had to unlearn. And I was lucky to have the opportunity to do a lot of reading when I was, well, all my life. But I was especially lucky to be able to uh, make it a profession. Uh, I... <clears throat> made my living for 20 years reading literature and talking about it to students and uh, it, it really helped me to come to some significant understanding about who I was and what life was really all about. <clears throat> I'll give you a few examples to make that more concrete. One of the uh, philosophies that was thrown at me a lot when I was growing up, not only by my father but by the by the religious teachers that I uh, 
I was subjected to, uh, the idea that natural man is an enemy to God. It, it's an incredibly profound idea and incredibly destructive, in my opinion. Natural man is an enemy to God. In other words, God somehow is not part of nature. God is, is uh, something different from uh, what human beings are in, in essence. And uh, that the way to, unlike the, the ancient philosophers and wise men and many of the prophets in, the, in other religions who have taught that the way to know God is to know yourself. You, you come to know God by exploring your own godliness. And, and when you start out with the misconception that natural man is an enemy to God, you're cut off from most of, of that kind of wisdom. And I think that that is one of the things that has led to so much turmoil in the world and has led fundamentalist Christian and Muslims and other religions to uh, really do a lot of damage uh, because they have substituted some kind of artificial notions about man for, for that kind of learning, the learning that takes you inside yourself and makes that the, the source of, of what you're to learn. Uh,